Hey, welcome to Unit 7. We're talking about rational exponents. Now, it would be rational for me to be, you know, professional and all that kind of stuff. But, eh, you know how I am. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some irrational choices made by your algebra, starting with Mr. Sullivan. Now, as we look at this picture from high school of Mr. Sullivan, we notice he is... By the way, I feel bad for this lady, whoever that is now, but... Look at this right here. This is not a satchel. This is a purse. Mr. Sullivan used to carry a purse when he was in high school. Look at that devious smile. You little guy. Okay, so that was a choice that was not rational. In terms of exponents, rational means you can write it like a fraction. So that's what we're going to be talking about. But we need to review our exponent rules first. So the first one's pretty easy here. As we review, go ahead and take these notes down. Pause the video as necessary. 8 to the third power is 8 times 8 times 8. We know that. We can work that out. Is 512. What if we have a negative exponent? That means 1 over whatever the positive exponent is. All right, so that would be 1 over 8 to the third. We just figured out 8 to the third is 512, so this would equal 1 over 512. So just keep in mind that positive exponents make numbers huge. Negative exponents, my answer is not negative. It's just really small. Okay? And lastly... This is why we're here today. These rational exponents, one third, eight to the one third. So what does that mean? So eight to the one third. That means I need three of them to make eight to the first. Because remember our exponent rules, you multiply powers to higher powers. So if I have eight to the thirds, that means I need three of them just to get a regular old eight. And that is the definition of cube root, ladies and gentlemen. So in short, if you have one over some number, if you have a fraction here, it just means that's the root. The root is right here. Let's practice a little. Four to the one half, that would be the second root of four. Well, we know that is the square root of four. All right, what about 40 to the one over three? Well, that would be the cube root of 40. Notice whatever's on the bottom, that's just the root. 32 to the one fourth power, that's the fourth root. So it's the number that you multiply four times to give you a 32. Now, these don't work out nicely. They're decimal numbers. Let me pause it right now. We'll bring up our calculator. So if I wanted to figure out what uh, 40, the cube root of 40 is, or 40 to the one third power, let's do that in the calculator, math. Notice we have this option right here, choice four. I can do the cube root of 40. What do I get for that? Boom, 3.42-ish. All right, now what if I did 40 to the one third power? So 40 raised to the one third power. And we get the same answer. So remember, a third is a cube root, a fourth is a fourth root. What about working backwards? If I wanted to write it with a base that's an integer, so the base has to be a whole number, like eight to the one half power. That's what a square root would be. Remember, if there's no little two there, there's supposed, if there's nothing there, it's little two. I mean, you gotta know that, right? I know that. Right, right. All right, how about this one? How would we write this using an exponent? That would just be 30 to the 1 fourth power. And example six would be one, oh, this is one over something. So I know it's like this example right here. So it's one over something. That means we have a negative exponent. So let's figure this out. We get one over 64 to the 1 fifth power. And now I can just bring that up top. This will equal 64 to the negative 1 fifth power. And that's what this equals right here. So then we're going to ask you to start simplifying. So I want you to think of a tree. Let me build a tree here. We're going to draw a big old nice tree. So check out this tree. Looks pretty amazing. Copied that off of Google myself. You're welcome. In the tree, where are the roots? The roots are in the bottom of the tree, right? There's the ground. The roots are in the bottom. So when we're looking at these fractions, just keep in mind, the bottom is where the roots are. So for this example, that means it's the third root. So the little three, it's a third root of eight. And then we raise it to the higher power, two. Let me show you why that works here real quick. So we have eight to the two-thirds power. What does that mean? We have the third, that's the same as eight to the one-third power, and then I square it. Because the rule for exponents, when you have powers to higher powers, you multiply. So two-thirds is simply one-third times two, okay? So I can write that as the third root of eight squared. 
Well, the third root of eight, we can says simplify, so we're going to figure that out now. The cube root of eight, hmm, what do we got? Two times two times two is eight. So that means the cube root of eight is two. And we did this earlier with Sullivan. Sully did this with you way back in unit. What unit was that? Unit three, four? Anyways, third root of eight is, is two, two to the second power. That is equal to four. We can figure that out. Side note, eight to the two thirds is also equal to eight squared raised to the one third power because it's the same, right? I mean, the order that commutative property, the order doesn't matter when we multiply those. So if I wanted to, I could write it like this. Q root of eight squared. Notice how that, and my answer here, notice where the two is here. Notice where the two is here. Should I bring a highlighter? Notice it's outside. Notice it's inside. They are the same. You could write it either way. So I will write it whatever way is most beneficial. Depends on the problem. Maybe it'll make it easier if I write it one way rather than the other. But the cube root is the same for both. It's just when we square it. Okay? So example eight, we have 16 raised to the three-fourths power. So that would be the, the root is on the bottom. The root, root is on the bottom. So that's the fourth root of 16. And we need to cube it. So what number times itself four times a 16? That's a two. So this is going to be two to the third power. And that all equals eight. Boom. Done with that one. Should I box that one as well? All right, now we're going to get into our rules a little bit. Time out. Before we do this one, let's go see something else that's radical. We need another radical idea. Okay, this is Mr. Bean. Check out this beard. This is a radical beard for Mr. Bean. That took him five and a half years to grow. Now, who's he trying to emulate? Hold on. This guy here, Uncle Sai. He's working. He's, he's almost there. This guy's from Duck Dynasty. By the way, stationed in bomb holder. Did you know that, Uncle Sai? Stationed in bomb holder. Okay, back to our notes. So the rule for exponents when you're dividing and you have a common base is you just subtract the exponents. This all equals 16 to the, you got to do 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. That's 2 fourths, which is the same as, you know, that's 16 to the 1 half, right? Because 2 fourths equals 1 half. So subtract these. When they're on top of each other, common base, you subtract. And then 2 fourths reduces. So now I, I just have 16 to the 1 half power. That's the square root of 16. So you don't need to write that too. You're right. But that all equals four. All right. I know we're just going right through them. Number 10, we have negative 27 to the one third power. That is the, the roots on the bottom. So it's the third root or the cube root of negative 27. Now it's negative. So is that okay? Well, because it's odd, remember it is okay. Because a negative number times a negative times another negative that will be, the product will be negative. Well, that's a lot of talk. I just did a lot of talking there. But basically, this is negative 3. If we have negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, it gives you a negative 27. So don't forget to put your negative right there. Now, what if the exponent's negative? Remember all the way at the top? Negative exponent doesn't mean that your answer's negative. It means 1 over the positive exponent. Whoa. What do we do right there? So it's 1 over 27 to the positive 2 thirds. Well, that equals, because the 3 is in the bottom, that would be 1 over the third root of 27. But we have a 2 in the top, so I'm going to square it. All right. We can simplify that. The third root of 27 is a 3, and that needs to be squared. So our answer here is 1 ninth. Lastly, the rule when two bases are side by side and we're multiplying them, the rule is you add exponents. So here we're going to get 81 to the 3 fourths. Because that's when you add 1 fourth and 1 half, you get 3 fourths. So this is 81 to the 3 fourths power. Now, I know 4th root of 81. And then we need to cube it. So that's going to be, what do we got? 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is another 9. So three, we got four threes. We'll give you 81. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. We raise that to the third power, and that'll equal 27. All right, that's how they work. As a last resort, you always could break out your calculator. Uh-oh. Sorry. You break out our calculator, and we can put this in your calculator like this. 
Uh, what do we got? We hit the math button and we go down to choice five. So notice choice five, we could throw in the four. We can put in 81. We can figure out the fourth root of 81. And if we wanted to, we could then put that in parentheses and add the third power. Raise that to the third, hit enter, and we get 27. And now you know the other way to do it too. You can put 81 to the 3 fourths power using exponents. Like such, hit enter, it's going to be the same. Okay, time for another radical idea from an algebra. This time we go to Mr. Brust. Check out this haircut from Mr. Brust. We have a great part right here. Somebody, if you have Mr. Brust, please tell him, don't visit Moses in the barbershop. Moses' barbershop is not the best place to go for a haircut. All right? So now we're going to solve some equations using our fractional exponents here. And sometimes the equations are very similar to things that you have seen before. So this, you know, we're going to use opposite operations. We're going to do plus 7, both sides. Draw the line. They cancel. Here's where the equation, the center of it is. We get 3x to the 2 thirds, and that's going to equal 27. We then, to isolate the x, we're going to divide by 3, and we get x to the 2 thirds equals 9. So to solve this and kind of undo this 2 thirds power, check out what I can do. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do it over here. But if we have x to the 2 thirds power, I can get rid of that by raising it to the 3 halves power. Pretty cool, huh? But I got to do it to both sides of the equation because remember the equation is equal. The rule is exponents to higher exponents, you multiply. And if I raise it to the 3 halves power, they cancel each other and you're left with x to the first, which is just x. But then we got to figure out what 9 to the 3 halves power is. So that is going to, remember the roots in the bottom. So we have the square root of 9 and we just got to raise it to the third power. That number goes out front. All right, so the square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the third power, 27. So x equals 27 for this one there. We'll put a little put a little arrow there so we can follow it. So on to number 14. Now, you're going to get a lot of problems like number 14. When I see number 14, there's a couple things that pop out real quickly. But I know that this, we just did a problem like this. This is 3 to the third power. And this is 3 to the second power. So 27 is 3 to the third power. 9 is 3 squared. So what does that tell me? I can rewrite the 27. I'm going to rewrite that as 3 to the third power. I'm not going to write 27. And that's being raised to the x power. That equals, that's 3 squared. 9 is 3 squared. And we raise that to the x minus 3. So if I can rewrite these bases as a different base to some power, and I can get those bases to be the same. Check this out. Powers to powers. 3 to the 3 halves power equals. Now, you got to multiply this. So it's 2 times x minus 3. That's 2x minus 6. Right? So I'm multiplying these exponents. So you get 3 to the 2x minus 6. Well, if the bases are equal and the equation's equal, then the exponents have to be equal. So that'll give me this equation, 3x equals 2x minus 6. If I subtract 2x from each side, I'm going to get x equals negative 6. How about that? Pretty fancy, huh? Now, how did I know to do that? I noticed that these two have a common base. Let's check out 15. I notice we have 5 to the 1 third, 5 to the 2 thirds. Uh, 5 to the 2 thirds being raised to the fourth power. So I got to do that first because our rules of exponents. And that all equals 5 to the x. So I know i got to deal with my exponent first. I'm just going to multiply these. 5 to the 1 third. And if I multiply 4 times 2 thirds, I get 8 thirds. So this is 5 to the 8 thirds. This becomes really a bunch of fraction work. Now we have two bases, and they're being multiplied. They're common bases, so you add exponents. So when I add 1 third to 8 third, I get 9 thirds, which is just 3. So 5 to the 3 equals 5 to the x. If the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. x is going to equal 3 here. Easy enough? Last one. Looks difficult. This is crazy. It's cray-cray. Let me change my color. 
So if you notice this one here, we have a common base. Even though it's ugly, it's A plus 1. That's crazy. But, I mean, that's what the base is. That's raised to the x power. That's raised to the fifth, which is raised to the third. We have a third root and then uh, a square root. Let me see if I can rewrite this a different way. So we have A plus 1. That is being raised to the fifth power, which in turn, there's a cube root of that. So can I just... Like put bigger parentheses and put cube root. That's one third power. But then that is being raised to the one half power because that's square root. So I'm going to use different type parentheses. But that's raised to the one half power. And all of this equals a plus one to the x. Well, look, these are all exponents raised to higher exponents. That means I can just multiply them. We have one half times one third. That's one six times five, that's five six. So this is a plus one to the five six. I just multiply all those exponents together and that equals a plus one to the x. So if the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. So x equals five six. See, so that looked ugly, but it's not too bad. Not too bad, it's just ugly. I mean, but you can figure it out. That's number 16. And these last two problems are Different ways to ask pretty much the same thing. Uh, the expression a 8 to the a is equivalent to 32 to the b. Okay, where a and b are both positive. Find the value of a over b. Can I rewrite this? Again, I see these and I see common bases. So I see this as 2 to the third power. And that's raised to the a, correct? Correct. And that's equivalent to 32. That's 2 to the fifth power. And that's raised to b. So 2 to the 3a, if I multiply those exponents, has to equal 2 to the 5b. Well, from what we did before, if the bases are equal, then the exponents have to be equal. So 3a has to equal 5b. Now, we want to know the value of a over b. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to divide both sides by b. i got to get b in the bottom. And I got to solve for a. I'm going to divide by 3b. Check this out. I got to get rid of the 3. I'm going to have to divide by 3. I got to get the b in the bottom. I got to divide by b. So here's a fancy little trick. What if we divide by 3b? Let's divide by 3b. What happens? 3's cancel. We get a over b equals b's cancel. So a over b equals 5 over 3. How easy was that? Nice. You could have done it one at a time. You could have divided by 3 first and then divided by B. But my way is a little fancy. I'm fancy. Why it's so fancy? All right, last one. This is an ugly fraction. It's got functions all over the place, different type of exponents, negatives. and I'm just going to start simplifying this. We have f of x is equal to x to the negative 2 power, and we take the square root of that. So instead of writing square root, I'm going to raise that to the 1 half power. That's over x to the 1 fourth, which is then squared. So knowing my rules, I can multiply on the top. I get x to the negative 2 over 2. You got to multiply those two right there. That's just x to the negative 1. And that's over. Uh, what do we get here? When I multiply, I get x to the 2 fourths, which is x to the 1 half. OK, well, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little trick here. This is negative. I'm going to put it downstairs. Let's put that downstairs because it's negative. And then you make it positive on the bottom. So that's 1 over x to the 1 half times x to the first, right? That, one, that is in the bottom as a positive. So all of this, we have x to the 1 half times x to the first. 1 half plus 1. The rule is when they're side by side, you add them. So this all equals 1 over x to the 3 halves. Now we can rewrite this using a root. Rewrite it as a root. Use the radical. So the roots in the bottom is the square root of x to the third power. Boom. What choice is that? It's got to be d. And we're all done. All right. That's it. Oh, lastly, I can't pick on my algebra. I was not picking myself. So here's Mr. Kelly with his, he's got his green beard on the leprechaun day, the St. Patrick's Day. Hey, my name is Kelly. Sullivan and Kelly were meant to be together. So remember, you got to work hard, be nice to each other, and it's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. See ya!